welcome to the design of concrete structure course so up to last class we have we have uh, elaborately discussed about the singly reinforced section means uh, the beam where the reinforcement is provided only at the one side uh, that is either at the bottom or at the top so that part we have discussed in details and we have derived all the equations total total compression forces total tension forces all these things from basics and then we have derived the moment of you know resistance and we derive the equations and we ultimately solve the single reinforced section so in this lecture onwards we'll be starting the double reinforced beam section in reality if you see in any beam nearby you will find all beams are actually double reinforced beams double reinforced beam means reinforcements are provided at the top both top and bottom both side of the section for example if this is a beam section then reinforcement is provided at top, at top and bottom that is all both the directions of reinforcement are provided that's why it's the name is actually doubly reinforced section so in this lecture initially we'll, do, we'll be elaborating why doubly reinforcements are sections are required if single reinforcement is sufficient then why do we need doubly reinforced section and then if double reinforcement section is required then how to design it how to analyze it all these parts we'll be discussing in this lecture so we'll be developing the theory part in this lecture and in the lecture 11 we'll be solving a double reinforced beam so let's get started so as we have discussed earlier also concrete has a very good compressive strength and almost negligible tensile strength means concrete can take very uh, very high compressive strength like if we discussed the strength of concrete is m20 or m30 whatever it may be so what does that mean so that mean is characteristic strength of that category of concrete is basically 20 newton per mm square or 20 mpa or if it is m25 grade of concrete then we call it characteristic compressive strength because that beam or that concrete can take that much of compressive strength compressive characteristic compressive strength of 20 but in the same concrete if you perform that tensile strength means how much uh, you know tension force it can take the same concrete grade of concrete then you will find it is uh, hardly 2 or 3 mpa or maximum 4 mpa uh, you know it can give the strength in in that tensile force so that's how we can understand that concrete is although it is very good in compression but it is very weak or it is very negligible strength in tension hence the steel reinforcements are actually provided on the tension side that is the single reinforced section we designed in the up to last lecture 9 so where the reinforcement is provided at the one side means where the tension force is coming in that location only we are providing the reinforcement so thus the single reinforcement beam on the tensile phase are good both in compression as well as in the tension okay so if you provide reinforcement so reinforcement so now i understood that concrete can take only compression force whereas steel is a very good uh, like he can take tension and compression both equally so if you see the grid of grid of steel may be f415 okay let's consider the grid of steel is f415 so in that case the the compressive strength and the tensile strength both are equal to f415 i mean the 415 newton per mm square or the mpa so you can imagine concrete is good in both either it may be compression force or it may be the tension force so that's why whenever we encounter any tension force in a single reinforced section we provide immediately the reinforcement at that location so now uh, the what is the limitation with this single reinforced section so last uh, classes we have derived the mu lim if you recall we have to, we have to, we have find it out mu lim what is mu lim L -E mu lim is the resisting moment limiting moment we have seen that a particular section can generate maximum moment withstand moment so for example here if you see this section so what will be the maximum moment it the section can generate so this will be simply stress into cross sectional area so here if if you derive it in terms of you know steel then it will be 0 0.87 into ast is the total tension force derived uh, force into lever arm will get the moment so in a particular section so if you consider this is a single reinforced section and some ast is provided so we'll have so this section can take a certain amount of mu lim now if you could see if the loads are more in the same beam so same beam has a 
uh, uh, mu limb of certain value for example it is 100 newton newton mm newton mm something like that so, so in that case now if more loads are coming on the same limb then what will happen the uh, the more moment has to be generated inside the structure inside the beam then the the moment maximum moment this section can take is for example 100 newton mm so now if more loads are coming then how it the how we can increase the moment capacity of this section so there are two ways uh, to increase the moment capacity of the section so if you just recall uh, what is the mu limb so mu limb let me write it here so if you did we have already derived this expression in the last classes so it is basically 0 0.87 f y a s t is the force into liver arm so liver arm is nothing but d minus 0 0.42 d so this is the expression we have derived in the earlier classes so this is the mu lean means this singly reinforced section can generate maximum of this much of moment so 0 0.87 f y is the stress multiplied by area of steel will give you the total tension force multiplied by the lever arm d minus 0.42 d so this is this equation will give you the moment so now a particular section uh, that fy if you are using fe415 grade of steel then fy is constant the value is 415 now ast ast also it has limitation we cannot increase more than certain value right if you increase more than uh, you know certain value of ast then the section will be over reinforced section again this is not advisable in our IS456. So in no case we should design the over reinforced section. So AST also has limitations. So we cannot increase AST value at after certain point. Okay. So multiplied by D. So D is what depth of the section, right? Effective depth of the beam. D minus 0.42 D. So there are another option. If you increase the value of D, then basically MU limb will be increased. Okay. So now to uh, now now so it is very difficult so now, now now you see how to improve the mu limb for example you, you the, the same beam is subjected to more load now so in that case the moment capacity of this beam has to be increased now moment capacity of the singly reinforced section is maximum of this value we can we cannot increase ast the only option is we if we increase the value of d then the ultimately mu limb will be increased so d is what effective depth right so again d also has limitations so we cannot increase d after certain point because ultimately maybe the, maybe the aesthetics, aesthetics of the structure also may not be looking good if you have very deep beam maybe you have seen in real life many structures where the beams are very deep so in that case sometimes it may not look good if the beams are very deep okay so in that case uh, that's why the uh, always it is not possible to increase the depth of the beam so then what is the other alternative of that so because that's what that there is a limitation of the singly reinforced section so the moment capacity of the singly reinforced section is actually fixed means up to this point we cannot increase beyond that uh, either we have to increase the d value so again this is not possible in all cases because depth of the beam will be sometimes architecture will give that view depth the depth of the beam should not should not be more than 500 mm or 600 mm whatever it may be so we cannot increase d as much as we want then what is the alternative so alternative is is that if you add both i mean if we add concrete also at the compression and concrete at the extra sorry uh, if you add the extra steel at the compression and extra steel at the tension also then we can increase so what is our main objective our main objective is basically mu we have to increase that is moment capacity of this section we have to increase it so for the singly reinforced case already moment moment is this much moment mu limb is this much so this is already there plus we have to add additional moment so how to increase additional moment now if you generate if you put few more extra bars at the top so concrete because top fiber for example this problem top fiber is subjected to compression right so now if you provide some extra bars because concrete cannot take more compression right it, it can take up to certain limits up to this point concrete can take com compression but if you apply beyond more forces then more compression forces will com compression stresses will be generated again concrete will fail so steel is as i mentioned steel is very good in compression as well as in the tension also so that's why we can provide the steel in the top side or the compression side even so the steel at this compression side will take compression force so 
instead of you know increasing the area of the of this cross section area of this cross section of the beam we can insert more steels at the top portion so this top portion steel will take compression force actually and this area we call it asc area of steel in compression asc and please remember and this this steel we call it ast area of steel in tension okay so these reinforcements we call it asc area of steel in compression so this comp this steel can take additionally more loads more compression forces so as i mentioned that our structure should be or our section cross section should be in equilibrium right means so summation of all the forces or summation of all the moments should be equal to zero summation of all the forces should be equal to zero so now we have already seen that this is a single reinforced section right so single reinforced section is in equilibrium means total tension force whatever is generated at the bottom is equal to total compression force which is generated at the top so that's what we have derived the equation also if you recall last classes we have discussed c equal to t so this expression we have used so this equilibrium equation we have used and we have derived the main beam equations so t c is total compressive force which is generated at the top and t is the total tension force and both should be equal okay so singly and force section now we understood this is you know in equilibrium because total compression force and total tension force both are equal and the distance between these two c and t we call it liverum so liverum also is this constant okay so now this section is now equilibrium singly reinforced section is equilibrium so now what we did to improve or to increase the moment capacity of the singly reinforced section we additionally added two bars or two or two or many bars at the at the compression side so now what happens now compression force has increased so c has increased now because we added additionally extra bars at the compression side so now total compression force has now increased now so then we have to we have to provide some tension reinforcement also because uh, this section also should be in equilibrium then only when you add both the sections both the section will be in equilibrium so this is simply singly reinforced section whatever we discussed earlier so this is the exactly the singly reinforced section so which is under equilibrium so that's fine now here in the doubly reinforced section we added extra bars at the compression force right so because of that extra compression for stresses or compression moment has generated at the top part, top portion so now this same amount has to be taken care by the tension force also. then only this section will be under equilibrium right so now it, because we added extra come extra bar for taking care of our, the compression force we have to add the tension bar also and we should produce the same tension force which compression force has produced and then only our structure will be or the section will be in equilibrium right so whenever we add extra bar or the uh, or the compression for compression bar at the top then we have to add that tension steel additional tension steel also at the bottom because total uh, when we add extra bar total compression force will increase right so similarly that compression force has to be has to be taken care by the total tension force at the bottom that's why we add additional tension force at the bottom also so now this section is also in equilibrium so now if you add both the section this is our final section doubly reinforced section where the reinforcements are provided at the top or at the bottom i mean top and bottom both the sides we have provided so this we call it doubly reinforced section so the doubly reinforced section is very easy to analyze and design because it is exactly as the sing singly reinforced section first you have to design it the singly reinforced section has maximum capacity of mu lim right so for example uh, if you consider this is a, a beam singly reinforced beam we have designed so this beam can maximum it can take of mu no maybe load whatever load is acting on it so that load may be currently the moment because of load is 100 newton mm for example this is just example i am giving so currently a beam is subjected to 100 newton mm moment okay so we have designed a beam maybe that single reinforcement beam is also sufficient to take care about 100 newton mm because you know whatever d we get it 300 or 400 mm and reinforcements uh, you know, that that moment capacity of this section single reinforced section may be 120 newton mm but the applied moment is how much 100 newton so applied moment is less our capacity of single reinforcement section is 120 for example so it is more so section is fine so single reinforcement design is okay now if some circumstances what will happen if the loads have increased that outside that external loads have increased now 
because of increase in the external load the moment also in external moment also will be increased right so now in the new moment so maybe moment revised uh, maybe moment one so after some time moment has increased because load has increased and this value is 150 newton mm so this capacity of this singly reinforced section for example is mu lim we call it right so mu lim is 120 newton mm so this singly reinforced section has a capacity of 120 newton per mm but at the initial stage moment was less 100 newton mm so this section was sufficient to take care about the load but for example after maybe after a few years or so some something happened or maybe more loads are coming into the structure because of that the moment has increased now to 115 so the capacity of this beam single reinforced beam is 120 but now the applied load is or applied moment is 150 newton mm so in that case what is the option to, in, to improve the moment capacity of this beam so this is maximum is 120 mm so either one option is if you in, increase the d value so this is the equation right mu lim if you increase the d value then ultimately this will be increased ultimately mu lim will be increased so if you increase more d then maybe mu lim may increase maybe more than 150 or 150 so in that case what will happen so we have to increase the depth of the beam so depth of the beam in always always it may not be feasible to increase because depth also has certain limitation depth of the beam normally if you look so the more deep beam may not be looking aesthetically good okay so that's why all dead increasing the depth is not a good option always so in that case what is the other alternative how do you increase the mu lean so another option is you can provide the additional reinforcement at the compression as well as at the tension and because of additional reinforcements the the moment has increased because of additional reinforcement so mu lim because of singly reinforced section moment has generated 120 now how much is the balance so the applied moment is 150 right and this singly reinforcement section can take 120 so 30 newton mm extra we need to take care so that's why we will provide extra reinforcement compression reinforcement at the top and tension reinforcement at the bottom both sides so that the net moment from this section should come minimum 30 newton per mm square so this section is 30 newton mm so this section will give 120 newton mm moment capacity and now this new section extra whatever we had we just added only two bar and uh, on two or whatever maybe the number of bars at the top or at the bottom both side we have provided so this section will generate 30 newton mm moment so total section is will take 150 newton mm so that's how using doubly reinforced section actually how it is how it is required and how it is very much useful to increase the moment capacity of the existing beam or the singly reinforced beam we need to provide the you know, reinforcement to the compression side also and that we call it doubly reinforced section so this section if you see so basically we combine singly reinforced section and this one and we get the final one this is the doubly reinforced section so now another advantage with the doubly reinforcement is that if you recall in the singly reinforced section we are discussing about you know uh, under reinforced over reinforced balance section and ductile failure we are discussing so always we are discussing in the last classes also and one of the design philosophies also that that our structure you know should fail the, the tension member should fail first so why tension member should fail first because you know bars or the steel bars are basically ductile ductile in the sense failure will be happening on a bar gradually not sudden not suddenly so the failure the, the, the steel bars will elongate when the loads are applied more than you know ill strength ill stress then the bars will be elongated so when bars are elongated you will see the cracks on a structure and ultimately structure will be breaking right that's why we always we provide our prefer our structure should be under reinforced section and always you know steel member should fail first so that was our, our objective and concrete should not first you know conc concrete should not fail in any case first that was our philosophy that's why if you recall we have limited the depth of the neutral axis also so xu uh, we had xu max so depth of the neutral axis also was there in the uh, singly reinforced section and we call it xu max so that means depth of the neutral axis should not be more than xu max if it is more than depth of depth of the neutral axis more than xu max then what will happen the structure section becomes over reinforced and the concrete will fail first right that was the criteria in our single reinforced design if you recall but here now what happens we provided reinforcements you know at the compression side also 
in the doubly enforced beam, we provide reinforcement at the compression cycle. So both sides we have provided reinforcements. So because of that, even the compressive compression side also failure won't be happening suddenly because we provided steel at the compression bar as a compression bar. So the failure won't be happening suddenly. So failure also will take time or the ductile failure will be happening because of you know compression reinforcement at the top. So that's why W reinforcement will ensure that the failure on a beam is always ductile failure. Even bottom side we provide a tension, so obviously steel failure will be ductile failure. Even compression failure also happens. In that case also, uh, the steel bars will yield or it will you know elongate. So ultimately cracks and all will be appeared on a structure. The so iron structure will be failed. So like uh, unlike uh, this singly reinforced section where we have the limitation of x u max means depth of the nuclear electric should not be more than some some value in that doubly reinforced section that rule is not that much straight or not that much strict because here anyway we are providing steel at the top so the failure even in the compression failure also will be ductile failure so that's what so that is the basic philosophy of doubly reinforced beam and why we need doubly reinforced beam basically to improve the uh, moment cap carrying capacity of a singly reinforced section because singly reinforced section has a limitation so we cannot increase the moment carrying capacity or after after certain point because you know concrete portion the concrete is limited right concrete strength is only 20 so if you are using m20 or m30 means maximum 30 whereas steel strength if you see it is 415 right how much times almost 20 times more than the steel you know, strength of the concrete that's why steel can be used in a compression for as a compression member and that's what we made the w reinforced beam so here uh, so basically how to design the doubly reinforced section is first we have to design the singly reinforced section so once we design the singly reinforced section we know what is mu lean means in the singly reinforced section what is the maximum uh, moment carrying capacity of the section okay so our for our first part we have to design mu1 so mu1 means basically mu lean so from this part we are finding out mu lean and then MU2 is this one, right? A moment generated because of this second section, W reinforced section. So okay, so this will be how much? So again, force into you know force into distance will be the moment, right? So force will be how much? So how much stresses are there in this section? Multiplied by what is the area will give you the force into distance liveram. Means from here to here, what is the distance? So this distance also fixed. So that will give you MU2. So mu1 is nothing but mu lean over and mu2 is force into distance right so force is how much so how much force is generated here so what is the compression stress at this position this multiplied by the area of the compression steel that will give you the force multiplied by the distance so distance from tension to compression this distance we are talking about so this distance will give you the mu2 so mu2 is due to asc and ast2 so this a ast we call it ast2 so anyway here whatever uh, you know still we are providing tension still we call it ast1 and here uh, additionally we are providing extra tension steel right that we call it ast2 and this is ac so these are the nomenclature we should remember every time so m1 is m1 mu lim m2 is due to these extra reinforcements whatever m2 will generate so final moment carrying capacity of this w reinforced section will be mu equal to mu lim plus mu2 or mu1 plus mu2 is the final w reinforced beam so now we understood in details about the w reinforced basic concept so now what are the assumptions of w reinforced beam design so whatever assumptions if you recall in the singly reinforced design also we have total six assumptions from is 456 we have discussed in details so that six assumptions are also applicable here whatever we discussed earlier that is the same here also it is applicable so now extra two assumption has came here what is this extra two assumption first one is provision of compression steel ensures ductile failure as i mentioned now here we are providing reinforcement at the top also so because we provide reinforcement at the top the reinfor the, the failure will be now ductile failure so hence the limitation of x by d ratio or x u max if you recall last single reinforcement we have the limitations x u by d value should not be certain point for fe415 it is 0.48 so some real limitation was there but here it is not strictly followed because the failure here is anyway ductile failure and this is 
second assumption, I mean, there is seventh assumption because the initial sixth assumption is also there. And then the eighth assumption or the last assumption is the stress strain relationship of steel in the compression is the same as that in the same tension. So the yield strength of the steel in compression is also 0.87 FY. As I mentioned, steel is very good. So it can take compression and tension equally. So, so the stress strain curve, if you recall, for the steel, stress strain curve was something like that. Uh, uh, stress strain curve of steel was something like that, right? Uh, this is the stress strain curve, stress, and this is the, sorry, uh, this is stress, and this is the strain axis. So this is the stress strain curve of steel, and the the stress strain curve is equal. I mean, it's is valid for the compression also. So that's why maximum stress, it, the steel can take compression stress, it can take a 0.87 F1. That was our the eight assumption. Okay, so now these are the eight assumptions. So now let's uh, derive the basic principle of the the double reinforced section. So now you understood this is a double reinforced section where the reinforcement are, are, are provided both at the top or at the end at the bottom. So top we provided ASC, we call it area of steel under compression, these two. And bottom also we provided AST, so which is nothing but AST limb means reinforcement for the single reinforced beam. How much was there? That plus AST2 extra reinforcement we discussed in the last slide also in details. Okay, and this is the strain diagram. Earlier also we have seen this strain diagram. So the maximum strain the concrete can take is 0 0.0035, right? This is as per IS code we discussed in single reinforced section. And maximum strain the steel can take is 0.87 FY ES by plus 0.002. So this is the expression for that. So now the double reinforced design will be same as single reinforced design initially plus extra section will be there. So if you recall last slide we have discussed. So here also let me draw the section here again. So W reinforced section is composed of two portion. One is exactly at the single reinforced section plus you know only section where we provide compression reinforcement and tension reinforcement also additional tension reinforcement. So if you add both we get the W reinforced section. So where the reinforcements are at the top at the bottom everywhere reinforcement to both side reinforcements are there right. So this is our W reinforced section. Okay so now uh, the reinforcements are provided. So this portion we got it AST, AST lean how much maximum tension steel is required as a single reinforced section that we already we know we know how to compute it now for this one for the extra doubly reinforced section here we have to compute mu2 right moment because of this section that how will you compute that how much force has compression force has developed in these bars and how much tension force is developed in this bar that we have to compute so how much compression force is generated how stresses has been applied in this bar that will be coming from this strain diagram. So in that strain diagram, so this is ASC, extra compression reinforcement provided here. So in this level, what is the strain that we have to compute? So epsilon compression, SC, epsilon SC, how much is the compression strain at this level that we have to compute? So once we know the stress, compression stress, that if you multiply it, so from the stress strain curve of steel, once you know the stress, once you know the strain, you can easily find it out what is the stress. So, right, stress, compressive stress on a, on a concrete, on a st steel. So, that stress, if you multiply it with the area of compression steel, ASC, that will give you the total compression, extra compression force, how much is developed here. So, like that, we can find it out. So, here now we have total 2C. So, 1C1, so C1 is because of, you know, singly reinforced section. So C1, whatever we discussed in the single reinforced section, that is C1, means this area of the stress block, we discussed all these things, C1. And additional compression force has been generated because of this bar only, these two bars. That we call it C2. So C2 will be how much? Area of compression still into the strain, stress at that level. Stresses at that level will give you the C2. So C1 is because of this concrete, whatever compression force has been generated that is C1 and C2 will be additional compression force because of the compression steel. So C1 is exactly whatever we discussed in the single reinforced section same value whereas C2 will be area of compression steel ASC multiplied by the stress. 
so stress of steel at that level so that will be you will be getting from the strain diagram what is the stress here strain here so from strain you convert it into the stress and that stress will be used here so a c equal to sorry c2 equal to a c multiplied by f uh, sc minus fcc so what is f sc minus fcc f sc is the stress at the steel level okay that fsc minus fcc why fcc what is fcc stresses at, at the concrete in the same level so now you understand here these two figure again so this is our single reinforced section where the reinforcements are there at the bottom and this portion is concrete okay this entire portion is concrete and this second section there is no concrete here so in the second section here there is no concrete because concrete is here right and we, here we added only extra bars okay so in this section there is no concrete so this is hollow actually only we have this uh, bars okay so whenever you provide the compression reinforcement at the top here like we provided here right so already earlier there was concrete so in the singly reinforced design already we considered there was concrete okay but in the doubly reinforced section we added extra bar in place of concrete here these two small bar, bars we provided here in this location but while designing the singly reinforced section already we considered that there was a concrete right but in the doubly reinforced section this portion there is no concrete now this concrete is replaced by the steel right this small two portion is replaced by the steel that's why while calculating the c2 we have you know subtracted the fsc because the concrete for whatever stresses are generated because of concrete because of steel because of concrete already we come we considered it in the singly reinforced section right already we considered it you know because of some uh, whatever stresses compressive stress concrete will take small small portion fsc that's why in c2 computation we just we, have, we are just subtracting it because this portion is already considered in c1 so why two times we should consider the force that's why we just subtract it FCC and we use FSC minus FCC and that is we got it C2. So this portion C2 portion will be more clear when we solve the problem. Okay, so now we have T1. T1 is because of single reinforced section 0.87 Fy into AST lim and T2 will be 0.87 Fy into AST2. From here T2 will come. Similarly C1 will be coming from here and C2 will be coming from here. So now net tension will be t1 plus t2 whereas net c or to net compression will be c1 plus c2 okay so these are the four figures very much important this is w n for section figure now i hope you understood the concept here so now we understood here uh, mu is basically total moment is mu lim plus mu2 both right so what is total moment mu so mu will be here uh, let me draw it quickly here so this is singly reinforced section moment will be mu lim plus w reinforced section right so w reinforced section will be something like that right? reinforcement is provided at the top or at the bottom and we have the final section here so this is our w reinforced section okay so now singly reinforced and this portion so this gap so from top to where the reinforcements are provided that we call it d dash okay so now this is singly reinforced sections so mu lim will be because of singly reinforced section and mu2 is because of this section so how much is mu lim so mu lim already we derived it in terms of concrete failure this is the expression concrete c into liberum and this is in terms of steel failure we discussed in the earlier classes these two expression okay so now here uh, 0.87 fy ast f so this entire this is the force in a steel multiplied by the liberum this is in terms of you know steel failure and this expression is in terms of concrete failure mu lim already we derived it in the earlier classes now here we are finding out now mu2 so mu2 means moment generated because of this second portion right so in the so in the second portion now if you see in the in that singly reinforced section uh, let me draw it here so here concrete is there and entire steel is embedded on a concrete right but in this section there is no concrete there is only steel bars are provided there is no concrete right so now we are co computing what is the moment because of this section 
so this is this section can be okay, moment mu2 can be written in two ways one is in terms of compression reinforcement another is in terms of tension reinforcement so this compression reinforcement we call it c2 right so in last slide also we have seen and this tension reinforcement because of the tension we call it t2 so this mu2 can be written either in terms of c2 into this distance or t2 into this distance so if you write this one this one u2 is written in two terms one is in terms of compression in terms of tension so in terms of tension t2 will be t, you know ast2 into total stress right that is the force force will be stress into cross sectional area so cross sectional area is ast2 and stress is 0.87 fy multiplied by the distance distance from here to here so total distance from top fiber to up to this portion we call it d right small d so small d minus d dash will give you distance between these two these two beam these two bars that's what d minus d dash will give you mu2 so that's what mu2 can be computed in terms of t2 now if you want to write mu2 in terms of c2 then send a, again area of steel in compression asc into stresses at this level so bottom is maximum tension force that's why we consider 0.87 but top fiber what is the tension for that we have to compute it from the strain diagram so that's why we have written fsc means stresses at the compression steel minus f stresses in the compression concrete fcc this is a area multiplied with the stress into lever arm lever arm means distance between these two d minus d dash will give you mu2 okay so now for equilibrium as i mentioned total tension force and total compression force should be equal so total compression force is how much asc into fsc minus fcc this portion minus equal to total compression total tension force tension force will be ast2 into 0.87 into fy so if you compute it from here we can compute what is ast area of steel will be ast1 plus ast2 from this expression basically we are computing what is ast2 and AST1 already we computed in terms of single reinforced section we know what is AST1. So AST1 plus AST2 will give you the final AST in the W reinforced section. Now we can compute what is the PT also percentage of steel simply area by you know, steel area by cross sectional area that will give you the percentage of steel also. So now how to determine the FSC and FCC. So this is the main critical part in the W reinforced section. Okay, other portions are very straightforward, but how do you, how do you, how can you find it out? FSC means the stresses at the compression steel and the stresses in the compression concrete. How two values has to be computed? That should be done in the stress strain diagram of respective concrete and steel. So we know concrete maximum failure. So let me draw it here quickly. So the reinforced section is here doubly reinforced section compression steel are at the top and tension steel at the bottom so the strain diagram if you draw so strain diagram top fiber will be subjected to compression bottom fiber is subjected to tension and the reinforcement at this level will be here so reinforcement is at the middle or somewhere at the distance of d d dash right this distance we call it d dash but then from top fiber to the compression reinforcement we call it d dash so the the top fiber is subjected to compression and that will we know 0 0.0035 concrete can take maximum of 0 0.0035 right but compression steel is not at the top level right compression steel is at d dash distance from the top fiber so at this point compression steel is there so at this point we have to find it out what is the stress so from the strain diagram we find it out what is the strain at this point and then using the stress strain curve once you know the strain we, we can find it out what is the stress in a steel that from the stress strain diagram so these two figures are basically is456 i got it figure number 23 and 23a if you go is456 you will get these two figures so now from the strain diagram you get what is the strain in a steel at this corresponding level once we know the strain then from the stress strain diagram we find it out what is the stress and this stress is basically fsc and FCC we are computing okay so now uh, there are two types of steel right we discussed one is mild steel and one is tort steel so for f 250 this is a stress steel diagram and this for the yield steel uh, for the high strength HYSD bar this is the stress strain diagram so now uh, the corresponding strain what is the stress this values can be find it out using these two diagrams okay
so uh, and uh, these same values are tabulated here in terms of in terms of fe415 grade of steel and fe550 what is the strain corresponding to what is the stress level okay so on top fiber we know subjected to maximum compression which is nothing but 0.0035 so top fiber we know we want to find out what is the stress here right that is simply if you use the you know similar triangle formula in these two two equations like one triangle is big triangle another is the small triangle and if we apply similar triangle similar triangle equations uh, and theories in these two triangles then we can find out what is the epsilon sc epsilon sc is what is the strain at this level okay so that can be easily computed and this is the expression for that so from this expression already these values are tabulated based on these two figure what is the if, if the strain level is 0 0.001144 then what is the stress corresponding to that so basically from these two diagram these two values are either evaluated and from this we can get what is the stress value so now what is the minimum and maximum uh, stand tension steel can be provided so now what is the maximum and minimum steel uh, are there in and uh, are allowed as per is456 so if you visit is456 clause number 26.5.1.2 is456 then you will get there it is mentioned in compression what could be the maximum compression steel you can provide so the maximum uh, the maximum compression steel should not be exceeding 4% of the whole area of the cross section of the beam as given in the is456 so the compress so the area of of the compression steel should not exceed four percent of the total area this, this is the maximum steel uh, we can provide in the compression side that is as per is code but is code has not specified any minimum compression steel reinforcement okay so there is no stipulation in is456 regarding the minimum compression steel in the doubly reinforced beam however hanger bars has to be provided right so that's why minimum 0.2 percent we should provide in a compression bar as a compression bar okay so maximum compression steel we can provide or is per is codes is code it is four percent whereas minimum they have not specified but at least we should provide 0.2 percent minimum in a compression steel in a, in a doubly reinforced beam and in case of tension as per is 456 if you go to this clause number the minimum amount of the tensile reinforcement shall be at least 0.85 bd fy so you, you have to evaluate this and minimum you have to provide that much of reinforcement in any case so if, if you compute and find it out ast value if ast value is less than this value then we should provide minimum of this one okay and the maximum area shall not exceed again four percent so maximum area should not be exceeding you know in tension four percent compression also four percent so in a double reinforced section maximum reinforcement we can provide is eight percent so four percent is in compression and four percent in the tension so maximum eight percent still you can provide in the double reinforced section that is as per our indian standard is code so while designing we'll take care this two part very carefully okay so now when we solve the design problem so next class we'll be solving a design problem so these are the steps we'll be following uh, for the design problem so first step is to determine the mu limb so uh, mu limb is basically singly reinforced section what is the moment carrying capacity mu limb and ast limb will compute will be computing as a uh, will by considering a singly reinforced section and using those equations we compute mu limb and ast limb we know how to do that now in the step two our main our job will be to compute mu2 means additional moment because of the additional tension and compression reinforcement asc area of steel compression steel ast2 and asc all these things we are we are computing now in the step 2 and step 3 we have to check whether we are satisfying the minimum and maximum tension and compression and reinforcement as explained in the last slide so we have to check whether minimum it is it is there maximum reinforcement whether we are ex we are exceeding 8% reinforcement or less than 8% that we have to check it in the step 3 and step 4 is the number of diameter bars how much bar you are providing and all asc ast values we are finalizing so that is the fourth step we'll be following in the design problem and then we will be designing the w reinforced section so this completes the theory part of the w reinforced section so in the next class we'll be solving a w reinforced beam thank you